Hey, this is Tracy again, and we've got a new uh, uh, GM uh, V8 direct injection truck. This has the 5.3 liter. 6.2 and 5.3 are going to be pretty much the same. The only difference may be where the vacuum barb is located. The 5.3, it's about halfway back on the intake manifold, you'll see. And what we're doing first is we're disconnecting this hard line. Keep all of your factory lines because we provide all the factory fittings you need so you can put it back to stock if you ever choose to in the future. These have a push to disconnect. The ones that uh, we replace these with have a little tab. They do the same thing, it's just a different uh, design on the release. So we're going to remove this by pressing these tabs from the valley vent, which is comes up just on the driver side underneath the throttle body. That is going to be the center of the can where the foul contaminant laden vapors are drawn out of the engine. The other end of this, where this would have snapped into, is going to be the uh, primary outlet. We have check valves in line to keep the flow going in one direction and because we're adding an additional evacuation point in source, these valves will open and close as needed providing constant evacuation to your engine where before it was only using intake manifold vacuum so when you would accelerate or go wide open throttle, there would be no evacuation and crankcase pressure would build at that time. So I've gone ahead and done the installation to save time on this. We've removed the main air box, air bridge assembly. We've taken off the factory hard lines from each end of these little muffler wings. We're plugging the passenger side one with the included vacuum cap. We're setting all of this aside along with the stock oil cap. And save this if you want to revert back to stock in the future. We have a pre-assembled bridge that snaps in and connects both valve covers so now the clean or fresh air coming in, instead of splitting inside this, is now going through the clean side separator, which this is. You simply remove your factory oil fill cap, put in our modified one. The two O-ring seals, so this pops down in, and then this will snap in onto uh, this side of the air bridge. Now, for our secondary evacuation, when you're under acceleration or at wide open throttle, we're connecting to, the only place you have to drill is right here into the top of the air bridge, just upstream of the throttle body. This area, the reversion pulses don't hit until you're well over 8,000 RPM. So there's still good suction, and at wide open throttle, you've got even more suction up here. So we're putting this back on. We'll tighten up all the clamps later. Let's make sure that it's on there securely and firmly how it was. We have capped this. And this, we like to take and hide everything as much as we can down under here and make it look stock. It's going to attach to this barb that you drilled and tapped in. And then this outlet is going to provide the evacuation suction needed after whenever you're accelerating or at wide open throttle. Check valves will open and close as needed. Now we're providing constant evacuation. 
all of the crankcase vapors are routed through the main separator and 95% plus of them and oil is only a small amount. There's sulfuric acid, unburnt fuel, uh, abrasive particulate matter, water is the main uh, ingredient we see. And they're all things you don't want in the combustion process because they take away from the energy the engine produces. But another more important part of this is this is a gasoline direct injection engine so that no longer does fuel spray on the intake valves to keep them cool and clean. So they quickly build up deposits that disrupt the flow in the efficiency of the engine. We should see now between one and three miles per gallon uh, improvement in highway fuel economy because we don't have these contaminants as part of the intake air charge any longer. Uh, knock retard is reduced because of this same reason. And uh, you overall are keeping your engine oil cleaner by trapping these contaminants out and evacuating them at all times instead of just at idle cruise or deceleration and that was it that simple we're mounting the can off of this radiator mount right here another popular place is off of one of the studs on the brake booster um, again this is only a couple thousand miles brand new truck and uh, you do not want to run the cheap synthetic blend oil because that leaves far more residue on the intake valves. You want to run only a full synthetic oil. Do not leave your factory fill, filled oil in longer than 500 to 1,000 miles max because that oil is full of a lot of assembly debris, casting flash, and iron filings from the initial ring seating process and break-in. Uh, doesn't matter what your owner's manual or the service center says, you do not want to leave that oil in. And you only want to run a good full synthetic oil. Mobile One is fine, it's not my favorite. I prefer AMS oil uh, over anything else, but there are a lot of good oils out there. Uh, just do not run a cheap synthetic blend. And that concludes.